Hello you guys and welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be sharing my reflections after trimester two being done of this year. Today is Saturday but we just finished trimester two yesterday so the crazy thing is we're already two-thirds of the way through the year. I know in a past video it wasn't an exclusive just trimester one vlog or reflection. I talked a little bit about kind of the end of trimester one and then here we are already trimester two is done. So so when I was reflecting about it, I kind of realized there were three main things that were on my mind, especially related to just my overall teaching experience this year. And I'm not sure if this video is of interest for you. I know at the very least, I kind of enjoy looking back on things and kind of seeing where I was at because trimester one felt like so long ago. That video was back in November. A lot has changed since that point. I've learned a lot. I think I've said this a couple of times, maybe not on camera, but um, at least two people who are close to me when I've been reflecting on it. I feel like, you know, in the big scheme of things of my teaching career so far, and then even my teaching career in the future, I'm guessing this won't be my favorite year of teaching that I ever have, but I'm guessing it will be the year that I learned the most about teaching and did the most experimentation. <laughs> I still feel like I'm trying new things all the time and just trying to figure out what works, figure out like my true teaching style. I mean, I, I had some of that from before, but there's more moving parts, it feels like, as well as I still do have more time where I can try new things and explore and evaluate compared to before where I was struggling to keep up with just the lessons and the preps. Now it's a little easier to do that. So that's kind of like my big theme, I think. It's still, it's a year of a lot of personal and professional growth, which is great because it's really exciting to feel like you're growing. And even though there have been quite a few mistakes made on my part so far, the mistakes are great ultimately because you improve and then you learn from them. So I'll get into that a little bit. I think first my biggest reflection about trimester two just compared to before is that I do really feel like my relationships with my students have deepened a lot. It's been very cool to get to know so much more about them. Just the extended time has helped. I've had a couple different rotations of students in my encore group where I get to where I feel like I get to know students a little bit more from that extra time and smaller class sizes. So that's really cool and uh, go into a few little extracurricular kind of things along the way. And it's funny because earlier in the year, and if you've been watching for a while, you might have seen it. I did like the student of the day thing where I wrote little thank you notes to them. You know, the funny thing was for a few students who I didn't know that well, that was quite a bit more difficult for some trying to think, okay, well, what do I say that is, I don't want to just write a general thing like, thanks for being in my class or something like that. I wanted it to be something authentic and true to them. And in some students, I just didn't know them as well when we did that, I think back in like October. Now it's funny because conversely, I feel like I know way more things about them and have much more that I would say or want to say in a response or like a letter if I was writing that to them. So it's definitely kind of an interesting change of pace. I mean, I have thought about the idea in the past of wanting to do kind of like an end of the year letter to students. I really wanted to do that um, at the end of last year, especially since I was leaving that school and I grew very attached to those students just because I taught the same students for several years. Um, about half my students I taught for three full years and others for two years because of me being the only middle school social studies teacher. I had kids every year plus some of them for Spanish one in high school since it was all in one school. And mostly the what it came down to is I just didn't have enough time to be able to do that. There was so much end of the year stuff going on. It was kind of a scramble to get done with that stuff. Here, again, I don't know what the end of the year is going to be like, how busy it is, since this is my first time having it be like an eighth grade graduation kind of a thing. I know the students actually finish up a few days before the end of the school year. We've got graduation, end of the year activities. We're doing a field trip to Six Flags. So there's definitely a lot that I'm sure will be going on those last days. So I don't know how crazy it will be if that's something that's feasible to, you know, write like an end of the year kind of note or not. But yeah, I just feel like my connection with them has grown a lot. And I mean, above all, I do really care about them. I think I've 
said comments before how um, they're just really great kids overall, which they are. Um, and as I get to know them more, I do really enjoy them more. And even though there are definitely still, as I'll talk about, classroom management challenges <laughs> I'm still struggling with, I think overall the bond has grown. And yeah, they just mean a lot. Like I, I do, I think a lot about them outside of class and, you know, want everyone to be okay and to, um, you know, despite different challenges that they are going through in their own personal lives or with family situations, you just, I, I want them to be okay and I want them to be successful at whatever it is they want to do. And I mean, I think most teachers can probably relate to that feeling, but I definitely, uh, I continue to care about them more as we go through the year and as I get to know them more, which is really cool. So I'm happy, I'm happy in the place where we're at because I do think that we are at a stage where things are overall pretty positive and, and pretty fun and friendly. So there's that part. Uh, the second thing, as I mentioned a little bit already, uh, reflections on classroom management. I think that in the first trimester of the year, I was just kind of getting used to things and kind of figuring out, hey, you don't have a system for classroom management. It's time to figure out what to do <laughs> about that. Um, genuinely, like when I came in, I, I really didn't have much of a system at all. And that was also because I really hadn't needed one before. I don't think one school is inherently better than the other and I'm, I'm very grateful for both teaching experiences. Where I came from before, I had much smaller class sizes around the average class size of 18, sometimes classes of 16. My smallest class I ever had was nine. Significantly fewer kids in the class means that they're is I think a better classroom management anyway. And just kind of the school expectations, there just wasn't really much conflict or many issues. I'd give a couple detentions each year, but it was definitely less common. And there were many times where, you know, kids would be working on a project or something and it would be completely silent in my room. And I'd tell them like, hey, if you guys want to talk a little bit, you can. Like you don't have to be 100% silent right now. Uh, not kidding, I would say that multiple times. And so that was kind of where I was coming from. I had never really had challenges with classroom management, so I didn't really know what to expect. Here, I definitely have felt more challenges and I live my mistakes every day that I didn't set up things well from the beginning of the year. I didn't set clear expectations from the beginning of the year. I didn't communicate as well about what the expectations were. I kind of came up with too many procedures that I went through very fast that none of them stuck as much as they should have, or at least I didn't take clear action. If there were like disrespectful things that happened right away that maybe should have warranted a detention, I didn't write a detention or contact any parents until mid-October. So I messed up a lot in terms of my classroom management. I have since tried to work on things and I do feel like things are, they're okay. Um, there's definitely still issues. And you know, some of that, it is kind of what it is. I'm not saying like I've given up and I, I don't report anything, but definitely that preventative approach is the most important thing up front. And I know that so many teachers can relate to that. How the expectations you set and how you structure things from the beginning when students are learning who you are and learning what your class will be like is hands down the most important thing. So I've definitely learned my lesson 100%. Things will be so much different at the start of next year. So that's definitely one of my biggest takeaways. Obviously we still have, you know, third trimester. I'm really excited about some of the projects and activities to come. But yeah, that's definitely, um, I think, my biggest lesson. And I, I tell it to other teachers. I was telling it to my principal at my uh, end of the year evaluation that we did a couple weeks ago, like the final evaluation of the year, talking through that. But yeah, that's definitely been my biggest takeaway so far. And honestly, you know, if you can learn the skills to manage a classroom, I feel lucky I've learned them at this point because all of the mistakes I've made this year have led me to get smarter about it. And even if I can't change 100% of things now, I know that in the future, some of the things that are an issue now will never be an issue again. So it'll be very clear. And yeah, I definitely, I think that that's something that will improve a lot. And then finally, I've been doing a lot of reflecting about curriculum and just the activities we do. 
Recently, I did an extra credit survey with students on Google Forms, trying to get a sense of their thoughts on things. You know, I wasn't really asking about, you know, classroom management behavior because I already know um, kind of the issues of that because I feel that and I live that every day. But, you know, thinking about our different bell work, we do a geography activity called GeoPower that we recently started. I did it in my past school for two years and then um, I was like, you know what, let's do some of it here. Thinking about our class content like some of their favorite products or what kinds of review helps them the most how much are we using google classroom is it too much using newzella so it was a lot of really good feedback i was actually genuinely surprised by a lot of it like one thing i was surprised about we don't do a lot of like formal lecture and notes more so actually probably for spanish at least recently and i was surprised you know sometimes kids grumble about doing the notes and also i know that you know Ideally, that's kind of a format of teaching that is sort of on its way out. I know that's more so how things used to be, but you know, it's kind of frowned upon, I guess, in you know, the new educational sector to be lecturing that much. But I was actually very interested that it was kind of a mix. About 40% of my students feel like the amount I'm lecturing and doing notes is just right. But about 40% felt like I should be lecturing more. And so that was very interesting to me. I wasn't expecting that. There were a couple other pieces of insight that were really helpful too, that were completely surprising. And so I think for me, I was, I was sort of for a while under the expectation of, well, you know, this year just focus on doing everything once here and then sort of get that feedback at the end of the year, thinking about next year. But kind of in trend of, you know, just making mistakes and learning from them. I'm like, well, might as well get that feedback now so I can try new things out and see what works with the rest of the year with our curriculum and try to, you know, do the best I can to be delivering the best I can. I think many teachers can probably relate. It's really cool to have as much flexibility as I do that I can plan and design my own lessons, but that's where you have, it's like almost too much creative freedom because for every given day or topic, there are probably over 10 different ways that I could be teaching that. And you always have to make a decision about how you do that, how much time you spend on a certain thing, what tools and online resources are you going to pull in on this? There's so many different factors and moving parts that it's like, how do you know that you're doing the best thing? You kind of have to just evaluate based on the assessment that you do or the vibe you get when it's happened in the classroom, the observations you make. It's really challenging to try to figure out what the best approach is. Even if something always works out very well, you don't know that that's automatically the best or you don't know certain times, maybe some students prefer that method and others prefer something different. So those are still big questions that I'm not gonna be able to answer this year, let alone, I don't know if I'd ever be able to answer them truly, but the idea that you know I keep trying to make things better and I keep trying to put new ideas into practice and see what happens. So those are kind of my reflections now. I definitely think overall I have become more confident in my teaching, I still be the first to admit, again, how many mistakes I've made this year in terms of classroom management and setting things up, but I definitely am happy with the direction that I'm going and having a chance to, you know, prove myself more and, and try to get better at things. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening through uh, some of those reflections. Like I said, I don't know if this is of interest to anyone else, but I always like looking back and seeing, wow, look where I was then and that's the thing you know hindsight i kind of wish i had done more of this kind of uh, blogging i guess earlier on in my teaching career too like thinking back to my very first year and see how things have changed but regardless thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye guys